Welcome back everybody, this is James White with Frequent Reviews where I put weird gadgets to the test. If you like what you see in this video, please consider subscribing for more videos like this. Now today I've got four utterly ridiculous gadgets that you wear. I just finished putting all these to the test, so let's see how they went in today's video. Let's take a quick peek at all four of today's items. First up is the Snacktive. These slip over your fingers and allow you to snack while keeping your fingers clean. Next up is this giant mobile pillow. When I saw this one advertised on Instagram, I knew I had to try it. For the beanie wearers out there, this is a special beanie. It has a headlight and a Bluetooth music player in it. So you can listen to music, light your way, and stay warm at the same time. And finally, we have these motion sickness glasses. These you wear on your face, obviously. They're supposedly help relieve motion sickness while providing a stylish look. I added that part to it, but this should be interesting. So let's get started and see how they work. All right, so for the snack dip, when this aired on Shark Tank, I actually ordered it before the episode was even over because it was ridiculous and potentially useful at the same time. So here's how my test went. All right, this is what I've been looking forward to. This is the snack div. They say, hack your snacks. Let's see if it actually works. It's a pretty simple device. It looks almost like a, like a pair of chopsticks, but it has these two loops here that go over your fingers, apparently over your index finger and your middle finger. Supposedly it doesn't get in the way, so you can play games, you can type, and you can eat your snacks without getting your fingers dirty. So let me grab some snacks and see how it works. I've got several bowls of just random snacks here. These are the ones I'm gonna try last. These flaming Hot Cheetos will definitely make your fingers really, uh, really messy, but I put it on. Actually, it doesn't feel like it's in the way. It feels kind of comfortable. Kind of a lot of precision to it, actually. So let me just kind of go down the line with some of these snacks based on like the, the least offensive as far as mess goes to the, to the most offensive. All right, let's, let's try some popcorn here. I've not tried this out. Let's see how it goes. Just picking up some like random pieces of popcorn, it feels pretty, it feels pretty dexterous. I mean, I feel like I can grab some out of there. Let me see. Let's move on to uh, some, some very thin chips, which break easily. Let's see how gentle we can be with these. Uh, not too bad, really. I'll sit here, hmm. Yeah, speed snacking, not bad. Now let's move on to some, some Doritos, which are definitely gonna get your fingers dirty. Let's see. Kind of going faster. I've also noticed there's like some some rubber ends on here, which I guess help with the grip too. All right, as far as the most offensive hand messing up snack goes, let's try the flaming hot Cheetos. It's holding them. It's holding them pretty well. I mean, I have no problem with that. Do I want to try one of these? Not really. They're kind of hot for me, but now supposedly you can use these even when you're typing and just have your snacks on the side. So let's try this out. Let me see. I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna put some Doritos off the side here. This is for snacking and working at the same time. So let me try something out here. Just typing something randomly here. Reach over, grab a chip. As far as like game controller goes, I mean it seems like it will work there too. I mean it's it's not in the way of any buttons I'm using. You can still reach over and grab a snack. Now normally if you're just hanging on the couch, you don't mind if your hands get some residue on there, but normally maybe you don't want that on there. So in that case, maybe this Snacktive is good too. I've noticed a few times the Snacktive actually gets in my mouth a little bit, so definitely want to clean this off between uses. All right, the Snacktive might look like chopsticks, but does it function of those? Let's check it out. The angle is not quite right for chopsticks. I guess I can kind of do it this way. I guess, so, I guess it'll work. You have to adjust your angle, but this is not the way you'd normally hold your hand when you're picking up uh, sushi. But you know what, it does work. All right, I should point out that I've continued to use a snack dip after I filmed my test of it, and uh, it doesn't really work that great as chopsticks. You can use it in a pinch, but it's definitely not a replacement for them. It's also kind of expensive. I paid 15 bucks for these plus 490 shipping from the direct from the website. 20 bucks, I can only see this being more like a $5 item. I don't see why it was so expensive. But with that aside, for grabbing a few chips or snacks while you're gaming or on your computer, it definitely works. This is described as a pillow with foam beads and a mobile phone holder. It seems to be mainly advertised for lounging around, so that's what I did. All right, this is, this is definitely the biggest of all the items in this video. When I saw an advertising on Instagram, it's very interesting. The idea behind this big boy is, is it, 
is it serves as a pillow and also a phone stand. Now I've seen pillow phone stands before, but not quite like this one. This one you wear on your neck. And then you kind of have your phone up like that. So you can actually loosen it or tighten it right here. You can even put a different phone mount connector on there. On the bottom, you've got these that fold out that provide a kind of a base for it. You can squeeze it together to tighten and you can push the button to open it up. This is an iPhone XS Max. It's a bigger phone, kind of heavy, but let's see. So I'm gonna wrap it around my neck here and then I can have the phone up here. You can also use this to adjust it as well. So there's a lot of different angles you can choose for it. This is definitely a very loungy kind of a kind of device here. Well, I mean, it's staying. It's certainly working. I wouldn't say it's the most comfortable pillow I've ever used, but it's functional. It's better than better than nothing. It seems like it's pretty easy to adjust. You have to kind of finagle it to get the right angle, but not, not too bad. It definitely seems to take a little bit of uh, getting used to what angle is best for you. Like, I kind of want to have this out a little bit which it's working fine for that. All right, for the ultimate lounging. Now this is much better than just having my head on the armrest there. It's not the most stable in the world. It does move when you move, but it is, it is holding the phone there. I am being able to rest my head. It does what it's supposed to do. Let's say you're in your bed. You want to prop your head up a little bit. You want to watch your videos on your phone. Maybe this will work. Let's see. All right, so around the neck here, make some adjustments, not too bad. And you can also adjust this as well. I mean, it's not completely sturdy because it is a flexible neck, but there, you can pretty much adjust it however you want. I mean, this is, once you get in place, it's, it's actually, it looks completely ridiculous. But with that aside, it does what it's supposed to do. I guess my biggest complaint is that the pillow part really isn't that soft. It's a bit hard. I would prefer it to be a little bit softer. You might get ridiculed by anybody that walks in and sees you with this. Uh, it looks kind of like a, some weird, like an octopus tentacle holding a phone in your face. It's very strange. It'd be interesting to fall asleep like this, but besides the comfort of the pillow, it gets kind of large. It's not the kind of thing you'd really like take for traveling or take your whole suitcase. I think it's more for around the house um, and, the, and maybe in the car, but in that case, it works pretty well. In the end, I wish the pillow was a little bit softer and I wish the internal structure here was a little bit sturdier. It's also rather large, but overall it does what it's supposed to do. So I give it credit for that. All right, as far as the Bluetooth beanie goes, there's not really a lot to describe on that one, so it's pretty straightforward. Let's see how my test went. How about for a wearable product, I've got this beanie, which not only is it a beanie, it's also a headlight, high, medium, low, and off, and it's got a Bluetooth music play here on the side. There's speakers in here as well. Taking a closer look at the light itself, 50 lumens, it runs about 80 minutes. Medium is 25 lumens, about 150 minutes. Low is 12 lumens, runs about 300 minutes. Bluetooth player here runs for, oh, about five hours. To charge this, all you do is turn it inside out and just pop it right out of there. It comes out simple. You got a cover on here. So this will plug into any USB charging port. It goes back in very simple. The Bluetooth player charges separately. There's a little pouch right here where you can pull it out of. You can see the controls right there and a very small charging port right there. The wireless range on the Bluetooth uh, says it's about 33 feet. It is washable. You want to take the light and the Bluetooth player out before you do so. I guess I better check this outside and give it a shot. Luckily, it's not too warm here in Vegas, so I don't feel bad wearing a beanie. But I paired it my phone. All you have to do is just hold the center button for a few seconds. It paired automatically, not a big deal. I'm going to put some music on and test the range. You can supposedly go 30 feet. I'm going to go at least 30 feet and see how it goes. Now, this is about 30 feet, like they say is the range, and it looks like I'm st I still hear it fine. Oh, I'm losing it. I'm losing it right here. It's like it's about maybe 45 feet. It's virtually impossible for me to feel these controls here. I just can't feel them. Fortunately, you can control the music with your phone, which I prefer to do anyways, but these buttons, they're not really ra very raised. I can't, I can't feel them. So, you know, they're kind of a waste. But let me go take a walk now and compare these quality wise to a couple other types of listening devices and then we'll try our night scenes and see how those go. I thought an outdoor walking test might be good. I'm gonna walk up the street with a bunch of traffic. I'm gonna listen to it uh, with the beanie and also with the earbuds and headphones. I have got the music actually playing right now so hopefully I'm not talking too loud. But right now the bass actually sounds better than I thought I was going to. Pretty good actually. All right, I will say that they did not, I'm listening to these right now. Uh, hopefully I'm not talking too loud again. These are certainly much better. They're, the foam uh, keeps the outside noise out. 
So, you know, the first ones are pretty good. These are better. All right, so these earbuds really aren't much better than the, than the beanie. Not only do you have a cord that you have to be attached to, sometimes the cord rattles around and really these aren't near, nearly as good as the headphones. So I would say the beanie is probably not far off from a, a moderate pair of earbuds. Doesn't cancel the sound out as much, but it, it's not bad really. It's pretty dark out here. I've got my camera settings kind of cranked up so you can at least kind of see me. But let me try the light out here in darkness and see what it looks like. High mode. All right, it's very bright. It looks like it's a, it's a pretty wide angle. You can see, I got the wall lit up pretty well. Let me try medium. All right, medium is not a lot dimmer. Uh, low, low looks fine too, really. Let me, uh, let me walk around with this a little bit. There's a strange creature in my yard. What is that? Bailey, what are you doing? We need a good girl. Let's see if we can Bailey can catch a ball here in the dark. Ready, Bailey? Good girl. All right, so this is high, medium, low, off. I'd say as far as brightness goes, it works pretty well. Now, as functional as this actually is, you might wonder why it's in a collection of ridiculous gadgets. Now, if you're alone at home in your garage, you're working on your car, you need some light, you want to listen to some music and stay warm, it's great for that. It's not ridiculous at all. But I use this as my primary headwear for over a week, and there's times I leave the house and I go to a grocery store, convenience store, I've got this big headlight on my forehead that I'm not using, you start feeling a little bit ridiculous. There are situations where you can feel ridiculous, but use it around the house, maybe not so much. But I've got to say, this one actually works quite well. All right, if you've ever experienced motion sickness, you know you'll do almost anything to get rid of that feeling. And these glasses supposedly help with that. Now, my understanding of motion sickness is that basically it's a mismatch between what your eyes see and what your body feels that creates some sort of a nauseous feeling. So these are filled halfway up with a dark liquid, which supposedly gives you sort of a false horizon that supposedly helps minimize motion sickness effects. I wasn't really sure how well I could test these out, but I gave it a shot and here's how that went. So I only know of two ways that I can never start to feel motion sickness. One of them is in the back seat of the car while reading, so I'm gonna try it right now. The only thing is that I need my reading glasses, so I'm gonna to have to see if these will work with reading glasses on. Will that work? Oh my God, that looks ridiculous, look at this. But actually they say you're supposed to use this after you start feeling motion sickness, so I'm gonna start reading for a while. As soon as I start feeling queasy, they're going on. All right, so I'm gonna get on my phone. I'm gonna read some news here in the back seat. That usually does it. So here we go. Let's see what let's see what depressing news I can read while I'm back here. Can I find some good news in here? All I'm seeing is bad news. There gotta be some good news I can read about here. The most bizarre streamer death hoaxes of all time. That should be interesting. I didn't know that all these this many streamers actually fake their own death. Here's something. I never heard of vending machine YouTubers rolling in the cash. That's different. Vending machine YouTubers. Here's one that says cleaning products may be damaging our respiratory tracts. The safest way is to store gasoline. It's a nice bumpy road. This is going to make me feel sick any, any minute now, I can tell. Woman claims she can barely open one eye after getting Botox. Oh yeah, it's, it's time to put these glasses on. I can already tell. This bumpy road's getting to me. Here we go. <laughs> I have my reading glasses on and I have these. Look how ridiculous that looks. That looks so ridiculous. I get two glasses on. I'm gonna keep reading though, because I think you're supposed to be able to keep reading with these on. Here we go, back to more, more headlines of the day. These are very important headlines. Dog is so excited to see her owner, she runs into a glass door. This is very important news here, <laughs> like world events. A dog ran into a glass door. You know, I have to admit that feeling that I've I got of, of feeling a little bit car sick is kind of going away. So, I mean, maybe it actually is working. I, Although, is it a trade-off that I actually have to look like this? But maybe it is. I guess when your stomach's feeling queasy, you don't care how ridiculous you look. I think what I'm gonna do next is head over to a park and try the tried and true motion sickness kryptonite of mine, which is gonna be a merry-go-round. Get on a merry-go-round, I get feel motion sickness like that. I'm gonna try these from the beginning. I'm not gonna wait till I feel motion sickness. I'm gonna put them on to begin with and see what happens. Well, I, I didn't get sick, so that's good. There were some people laughing at me over there. I'm not sure if they're laughing because uh, a man my age was on the merry-go-round or because I was wearing these ridiculous glasses, maybe both. So far, they seem to work. I mean, I haven't gotten motion sickness in the merry-go-round, didn't get motion sickness in the car, so all I can say is that 
seems to work. So this isn't something I could really give a comprehensive test to uh, because motion sickness can be caused by a lot of different things, uh, cars, boats, planes, merry-go-rounds, everybody reacts differently to it. Some people don't get motion sickness. So this, my test was just a very minor test to see if it worked for me in a couple of situations and it seemed to. But reading around the internet and uh, reading articles online, it seemed like there, a lot of people do find these to work. This particular pair was a bit small and a bit cheap feeling. So you might want to shop around as far as that goes. But if you suffer from motion sickness and don't want to deal with pills or patches, this might be another option to explore. As long as you don't mind the way it makes you look. They're not really that expensive, so they're probably worth trying. Before I wrap this up, let me rank these four items on a two-part scale. One in usefulness and one in ridiculousness. Scale of one to 10, most points wins. For the snack div, I'm gonna say usefulness, it's about a five, and ridiculousness is about a six, for a total of 11 points. For the mobile pill, I'll say usefulness, maybe about a four. Ridiculousness, maybe about a seven, also a score of 11. As far as the beanie goes, I would say usefulness is about a nine. It's pretty useful. Ridiculousness, situational, maybe about a three. As far as the motion sickness glasses go, I would say usefulness in some situations, for some people, probably about an eight. Ridiculousness, definitely a 10. Total score, 18. So as far as I'm concerned, the glasses win the combination of the most ridiculous and most useful of this bunch. And your mileage will certainly vary. If you've used any of these products, tell me what you think in the comments below. And please subscribe for more product reviews from me, James White, with Freakin' Reviews.